Good afternoon and thank you for welcoming me to your your competition. This is this is awesome. I am you know interestingly enough, I am more fascinated by what I saw here than even the messaging that I have to deliver to you. I, I my mouth dropped. I've never been to one of these and uh, Vink has always talked to me about the, uh, the opportunities that you, the young people have and, and how they get to exercise these skills. And just seeing it in motion, I, I, I lost my speech today. I really did. I really have not that much to add other than to tell you how fascinated I was by what I saw and what is happening with youth at your age. I, I think of all the issues I Part of what I do also is I, I work with a nonprofit in D.C. that deals with uh, transitional housing and frankly uh, foster care and a lot of the social services. And when you think about you know what is happening with young people, and so many are either running away from home, so many are becoming homeless. And and when you walk into an environment like this, and you're like, wow. Look what can happen to a brain, to an individual. Think about the future that they will have. And it's happening right here. This is not a foreign country, is it? <laughs> this is still America, is that right? Yeah, yeah it's happening right here. And it's not even that far away from DC, and it's happening. So I find it to be very, very extraordinary. Um, so I'm not gonna stand here and spend a lot of time other than to, to share a few ideas with you. The one thing I think I took away from just growing up and going to school and of course um, pursuing the course of academic studies that I have actually had the opportunity to pursue, and, and frankly even working in, in, in out there in the corporate world, the one thing I want to share with you, and, and I think this is probably important, everything counts. I'm not sure how you receive that, but in, in reality, I really believe everything counts. You know, sometimes, especially in, in the classroom, we get to enjoy certain subjects. On the job, we actually like certain job functions. And, and somebody will say, oh, I don't do that. This is what I do. Or at school, we'll say, I don't like that subject. It doesn't make any sense. The thing I have discovered more than anything else, just over time, between the academic world and certainly the corporate world, is that really and in, in truth that in fact everything counts. Even the most minute detail of probably some seemingly absurd or routine function. Just imagine the person who makes the coffee every day. What do you think happens if you've been making coffee for 10 years? Something interesting happens. Over time, you begin to realize what actually tastes good and what people actually enjoy. Who would, who would imagine that perhaps down the road, you could become one of the biggest coffee producers ever? And maybe that wasn't your journey. Maybe that's not where you started. I tell people, that I was one of those kids in high school that chose to do a business curriculum. And back there in my third world, Jamaica, the idea of doing business meant, you know, commerce and economics and, and, and those types of subjects. And I was told, probably at the very onset, that one of those classes, back then we had typewriters that you had to hit like this, we were told, as guys, we had to go to a typing class. Guys don't do typing, do they? No. We don't do typing, that's for the women, that's for the girls. And through our embarrassment, we didn't go to class. For about three or four weeks, we, we went to the gym and played ball. Until, and back then in our days, the principal was allowed to be, you know, like spanky. So we were playing ball one particular day. I'll make this really quick. We were playing ball on a particular occasion, and the principal stood at the gym door and watched us the whole session. Of course, by the time we turned around and saw that he was standing there, 
we automatically felt like we were going to be expelled. At a minimum, we are going to get a beating. And then when we go home, the parents was going to do it all over again. <laughs> Instead, what he did, he marched us up to his, his office and he sat us down. We knew the worst has come now. It's about time to call home. And we just thought the worst. And he said something quite interesting. And it's funny because I'm repeating it now. He says, you know what? You never know. The very skill set that you think you don't need might be what you need to save your life. I couldn't, no, I don't think any one of us could have interpreted that in the proper context. I don't think we could really receive that in the proper context. Nonetheless, here's what happened. I happened to graduate high school at the time, it was like several months later. I graduated high school, I had no idea, certainly no, my parents couldn't afford college. And jobs in third world countries, as you can appreciate, are not, you know, like readily available. I had no idea what was going to happen, except I got a call, at least my mother got a call, from a lady she knows. And the lady says, have your son come by and, and, and let's talk. And you know, older people like to talk to young people about their future and what your career will be. I, I just showed up. I sat there for a while, and you can just imagine where my story is going. I sat there in the waiting room until I was called. And she said to me, these very words, your desk is over there. And where was over there? You know where it was? It was a typing pool. <laughs> this, is not a, that, this is not even a made up story, this is a real story. It was a typing pool. My first job in Jamaica, my first job anywhere, we were going through it, it was a time when we were just introducing computers. Anybody remember those days? Those big clunky pieces of hardware? It was a time when we were just introducing computers and they were converting the manual data and putting it on a system. I was part of that. I had no idea that I was going to be introduced to a computer process. But it helped that I could type 90 words a minute with accuracy. And I was selected as one of the people to help the government convert the data at the time. I had no idea back I had no idea where I was going. I say that again just to emphasize everything counts. Do not walk away from a subject matter or an opportunity. In fact, I believe that when you approach your subject matters, whether, again, whether in the classroom or at work, understand that these are all part and parcel of everything you need for your journey to become successful. It's interesting, I'll skip to this, you'll, you'll appreciate my little design here that I, that I thought to, to illustrate. You'll appreciate the fact that even with the Pac-Man that you're more familiar with than I am, what does he do? He needs all the pieces, right? to become stronger, and somewhere along the, along the way, as he gathered these pieces, each of them are worth very different points, right? But it, it helps, in the end, for that animation as we know it to become successful in the, in the latter end. And I think this is a, probably a good illustration of that. I think also of people like do you know who this guy is? Do you recognize his face? Like Charles, Bron Charles Bronson. Do you know he suffered with dyslexia when he was a kid, when he was in school? Do you know this guy had failing grades throughout his entire school career, if you will? because he couldn't quite articulate the way that you and I are expected to articulate. And what do teachers normally do? They give you a failing grade, right? Now how do you feel about it? You tend to want to stop. I'm never gonna be good enough. But he had a passion. And what started as simply trying to sell records, records, you know, those little vinyl things that we no longer use, that plays on a turntable, that we don't know what they are anymore. Just 
selling records to friends in the back of his car to now he has one of the largest multi-billion dollar enterprises you can imagine. Anybody remember this other guy? Well, you know him very well, right? And for this crowd, you know who this is. Again, we have individuals to look at and to realize that it doesn't matter where you're coming from or what your circumstances, even what happens to you at your age in your classrooms. The possibility of the future is endless, but you've got to let everything count. Every experience that comes to you is important because the sum total of those experiences is what actually you will use to become successful. Do not sidestep. I, I've seen even individuals, for example, my background is primarily accounting. And of course, I have a PhD in economics, and you would say, but well, where, where does the two fit? I have a master's in finance. Oh, well, well, wait a minute, what are you doing? You seem like you're all over the place, but do you understand that each of these disciplines all help in, in total to help me become successful in what I do? And this is the point I'm making to you this evening. So here again is my journey. Somewhere along the line, I gravitated to accounting as a discipline. I loved it, I, I worked hard, I pretty much worked with numbers all throughout my whole career. Decide that finance was a good complement, and so at the master's level I entertained that. And somewhere in all of this I had a professor who would constantly mentor me and suggest that I should take this to the doctoral level. And then he said something quite interesting. He says, what does a doctorate in accounting get you? He says, you're, you, have a, you have a CPA by now, you have an undergraduate degree in accounting, you have a graduate degree in finance. Why do you need a PhD in, in the same field? He says, you need a complement. And here's what this guy did. He deared me. It was an interesting deer. He says, I'm going to tell you, for the subjects that you have so far, you have a micro view of the world. I think you need to have a global view of the world. You need economics. Now just imagine you take an individual whose background is accounting and finance and throw them at the highest level to pursue a doctoral degree in economics. It makes no sense. Because people who become PhD in economics have economics background. That was my challenge. I wanted to walk away from it. I couldn't. You know why? Because he called my phone every day until I signed up. And I struggled with it because I had no background in the field. Yes, I had one or two classes in economics. But at some point, I tried to listen to my own thoughts and I settled down and I said, you know what, maybe this is my journey. Maybe this is my journey. And I accepted the call on, call on that and I continue to move forward. Today, I basically try to mix the principles of monetary and fiscal policy along with being a certified public accountant. And with that, I also lecture at University of Maryland and we have a consulting practice. And that practice actually extends itself to taxation, certainly to monetary and fiscal policy, and finance. I don't know what that makes me, but I tell you what it helps me do. It helps me take advantage of all of the facets of what life brings you to use to become successful. Thank you so much. That's my, my little discussion with you. Additional support, youth stem, so we'd like to present you an award. Oh, thank you.